So, what is C4? This is why the military likes C4. It's lighter than an Emmerdale plotline and it feels about as connected to the road as Donald Trump's hair is connected to the top of his head. The cabin is generally very good though. It's genuinely interesting, which is in contrast to a lot of the stuff in this segment, and it has some lovely details. I found myself forgiving the car for that because it's just such a cool bit of styling. Like how you're totally okay wearing highly restrictive trousers on a big night out because you know that you look the absolute bomb. Why Citroen? Why? Before we get going, please subscribe to the Vanner on my YouTube channel. Dead easy to do, one click. Also, hit the notification bell, second click, and you will get notified as soon as we put a video up. And we do have the best car review videos on the entire internet. And if you want the most cost-effective way of getting into a brand new one of these, a C4, go to Vanaroma. Right, let's go. C4 review, doing great. <laughs> Here is what I said on the Twitters when I first clapped my eyes on pictures of the new Citroen C4. It's a good chance you're watching this on a little phone screen, so I'll read it out for you. New Citroen C4 looks enjoyably mental, IMO. Now all it needs is a driving position fit for a human-shaped body. Rarely accomplished in a Citroen. Snarky, eh? Why Citroen? Why? To be honest, that's probably not the best place to start. Because actually, I really like this car for a lot of reasons. And to be honest, the driving position isn't really that bad. It's just that it could be better, definitely. But mainly, I saw an intro and I couldn't avoid doing it. We'll come back to this stuff. So, what is C4? This is why the military likes C4. It can make things go away. That's one way to cut up a watermelon. Well, until now, it was a quirky, but quite flawed family hatchback. And it's still a family hatchback. And to be honest, it's still a bit flawed. But for this third one, Citroen has turned the quirkiness to 11. By styling it like an SUV, and a coupe. Don't roll your eyes, right? It is totally okay to do that now. Blame the Germans for this unusual reality. Or you could argue that it harks back to the Citroen CX, which is probably what Citroen would do. Either way, what it physically means is that the C4 rides a bit higher and looks a lot chunkier than a normal hatchback. Ford Focus or a Volkswagen Golf say, but it's also got a long sloping roof line like a coupe. Now, you might think it looks a bit of a mess, Mm -hmm. But like peak era Pearl Jam, this mess all conglomerates into a coherent whole somehow. It also rides as smoothly as that guitar riff at the start of Alive by Pearl Jam. I don't know why I'm going all Pearl Jam today. Maybe it's a shirt. Anyways, arguably the most successful SUV trait that the C4 here has imbibed is truly luxurious ride quality. Range Rover luxurious ride quality. Really, it does it with a magic combo of tall springs, quite thin tires, and Citroen's wonderfully literal progressive hydraulic cushions. They give the car a quote, flying carpet effect. Now, what that also means is that, unlike a lot of other hatchbacks, this is about as dynamic as droopy. You know what? I'm happy. Now, the steering is quite nicely geared, so initially, at least, it does turn the car sharply. Although, later on in the turning process, it feels a bit like it needs slightly more lock than usual. But it's lighter than an Emmerdale plotline, and it feels about as connected to the road as Donald Trump's hair is connected to the top of his head. But... Vivre Blas Decorons, because that character makes it unique in the segment. Now, Citroen has always made floaty, comfy cars, but these days it's part of an assemblage of brands all clumped together called Stellantis. And that arguably means that Citroen can push more into this whole comfort oriented shtick. It can lean into it more because the company as a whole knows that Peugeot can do the dynamic, aggressive thing. Aggressively styled, that is. And Vauxhall can focus on practicality and something else that I've forgotten. And value. <laughs> and Fiat, well, it can concentrate on 
Um, making lunch for everyone? Mamma mia! Easy joke. Sorry. However, you do wish that Citroen had spent just a bit more time on the basics because this does fall into some of the very common traps that Citroens tend to. And so, to the driving position. Now, it's not terrible. I'm very comfortable in here, in fact. But it's just not ideal. So for example, when I'm turning this car, my knuckles are scraping my knees. And the reason that's happening is because I have to have the seat quite far back because the pedals are quite close and the seat tends to lower from the back. So if you've got your seat quite low down, which I do because I'm tall, then your legs are angled upwards. Also, there is a sense that this is just a rung down in quality terms from the Peugeot stuff, which leads you to ponder the following scenario, okay? Why at some point didn't Citroen invite Peugeot's chief of cabin quality and Vauxhall's head of ergonomics and just ask them some basic questions? Hey Peugeot, how do you make your cabins feel that good? A Vauxhall, do you reckon we could borrow your full-sized ergonomic model? Because ours seems a bit disproportionate. It's got really long arms and really short legs. The cabin is generally very good though. It's genuinely interesting, which is in contrast to a lot of the stuff in this segment. And it has some lovely details, like this hidden iPad holder, which you can see me pretending to use here. There's also a storage tray for you to put the iPad in when you're not using it. P.S. The airbag deploys over it. So if you're watching Netflix and the car gets a tap, you're not gonna get smacked in the face with an iPad. The digital instrument panel, which is standard, has ambient lighting behind it, like a fancy telly. And the infotainment screen is large, and that's also standard. And the seats are flat and squishy. It also has the best keyless entry system I've ever used because it just works properly. As long as you have the key about your person somewhere, it will unlock the car when you get close to it. And when you walk away from the car, it will lock it again. There's no double pulling on the handles and there's no having to hold the key against the door handle to get it to work. It's just brilliant. But it still has a couple of bits of Citroen album filler, if you like. Stuff you wish they would improve. A couple of trays, exemplars, the glove box, obviously tiny, already half full circuit boards. And the infotainment. Mm-hmm. Good news is that unlike the Citroen C4 Cactus, there are dials for the air conditioning. Go dials. But on the screen, everything you want to do seems to take one more jab or one more menu than you want it to. But at least now there is a physical home button, a little bit of plastic here, which you'll find sort of functions like control alt delete. You'll most often press it when you're just confused about the menu you're on and you want to abort and just go back to the start. You can also criticize the plastic quality if you like. It's like the things that you push and you pull, the little flap in the center console and the glove box door, they all just feel a bit flimsy, a bit undamped. And it all just looks a bit gray. Now it does have soft touch surfaces in all of the standard areas. So here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here. But frankly, it's nowhere near a Golf or even a Peugeot. Also, rear visibility, utterly rubbish because of the tailgate design. It's a big line running across it. But I found myself forgiving the car for that because it's just such a cool bit of styling. Like how you're totally okay wearing highly restrictive trousers on a big night out because you know that you look the absolute bomb. The entire experience is like that, really. It's a car whose whole personality and its good qualities, and there are many of them, far outweigh the things that just fall a bit short. It is just effortlessly calm, this thing. The instrument panel is all clear and crisp and HD. Front and side visibility are really good. And it's also really, really quiet fundamentally. It really does feel like a class up in primary refinement terms. Even at motorway speed, it's dead good. It doesn't get all blustery when you get past 60. And it feels just as comfortable as a C5 Aircross does while feeling much more tied to the road, especially at motorway speed. It still has that slight bob and sway of a luxury car, but that's kind of a relaxing trait. And all the mechanical bits, the suspension and the brakes and all that, they're really quiet, which is especially noteworthy in this particular car because it's an electric one. So generally when you take away the sound of the engine doing all its explosions and that, you end up augmenting the other sound, emphasizes the other noise, I mean. It's like when you can hear your stomach gurgling when you're meditating. I'm sure you can relate. So let's go through more of the good stuff. Yes, drivetrains. Now, as per the Peugeot 208 and the Vauxhall Corsa, a car that this shares a chassis with, albeit it's stretched here a bit, 
you pick an electric drivetrain as if it's just another engine choice, which is still quite rare. And there is no difference in space and practicality, as in there's no compromise. Now there obviously is some compromise, the standard compromise of having to charge your car instead of just fill it with fuel. And the fact that this doesn't have the longest battery range by any means. In fact, even the claimed battery range is pretty fanciful. So it claims 210, I think, off the top of my head. I'll put the actual figure on the screen. But I found that you're looking closer to 150, 160 at best. But like the Vauxhall and the Peugeot, it has that cool setup where the driving modes affect power. And I said this about the electric versions of both the 208 and the Corsa, but this is the best one because the quiet of the electric drivetrain suits the nature of the car. And having that instant responsiveness that you get with an electric drivetrain always just enhances the experience. Go to sport mode and you can mash your foot on the throttle in this and it doesn't talk to you, which kind of tells you how quick it isn't because the tires are really thin, so you feel like it should be. It shouldn't have that much grip, but it still feels like it's got more than enough pickup. And honestly, when you're just putting along a 30 like I am now, this really does feel like a top quality car, assuming you're not doing this sort of thing all the time. It's also really easy to live with because it comes with the CCS system as standard. That's the combined charging system system. Even the brakes are blended in well. They don't feel inconsistent. They don't feel grabby. It feels like a very natural experience. The other engines then, standard Stellantis Chisel. There's a tongue twister for you. That means three cylinder petrol and four cylinder diesel. All relatively economical, all a bit growly, but in the petrol's case, in a good way, and in the diesel's case, not so much. And there is nothing quick at all. But then, given the character of this thing, you just don't need it to be quick. You wouldn't want it to be quick. It wouldn't feel very good with a lot of power, this car. <laughs> you're probably going to want an automatic with it as well. Long gone are the days when Citroen had that horrible clutchless manual thing that would kind of shunt you backwards and forwards every time it changed gear. The Eat 8, funniest gearbox name ever, <laughs> is really smooth, really suits the nature of the car, definitely the thing to have. Also, I haven't driven a manual, but I'm going to suggest that if you do have a manual, there's probably not quite enough room down here for all three pedals. A classic Citroen ergonomic misstep almost literally. So again, regardless of drivetrain, practicality stays the same, yeah? Clever packaging of the battery and the electric one in it. And this is a very accommodating hatchback, largely, generally. Now, by volume, the boot is nothing special, as you can see, especially for a fastback type thing, as in the same style as a Honda Civic or a Skoda Octavia. They tend to have larger boot volumes. But generally, it is a much improved boot compared to the one in the C4 Cactus. It's just more well furnished. It has a really high loading bay with a twin floor as well, so you can drop the boot for more capacity. The seats fall flat, there's a ski hatch, there's hooks and stuff. It's just been very thoughtfully considered. It's also got quite a long loading bay because of the nature of the design of the car. The C4 has even got quite a lot of rear leg space and the SUV-ish styling means the floor is a little higher, which will make it a bit easier to get into for some people. Now, there's not much light at the back because of the very shallow rear screen, but obviously physical space is more important than that, and it does have quite a lot of that. There are four trim levels, and they're dead easy to fathom. The first two of which are Citroen literally making sense. And the second is the one that this guy's asking Jesus for in church. Shine, Jesus, shine. Why not? Aim high. He's got the resources, right? Although this sinner managed to blag an even better one. This is a Shine. plus. You know how this works. Top spec cars have everything. Heated leather, wireless phone charging, self-steering Tom Cruise control, and also a mega stereo. Check this out. Hey Siri, play Slipknot. But actually, the basic car will feel virtually the same. You'll just be touching the cloth rather than leather. Great looking set of 18 inch alloys, even on the base car. And in fact, all the cars get the same size wheel because Citroen is prioritizing comfort, right? It doesn't want to put one of these on a huge set of wheels and ruin all the good suspension work it's done. They all get the digital instrument panel, which is really high def and clear. They all get the 10 inch touch screen. There isn't a smaller one for base cars. They all get proper LED headlights and just loads of safety stuff. Citroen quotes 20 whole systems, in fact. Now, some of 
them are only on upper level stuff, but you can bet your bottom Euro that this will be one of the safest family hatchbacks ever made when Euro NCAP finally gets round to slamming it into a wall. And that's it really. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, there are parts of this car that I wanted to be a bit better kind of go back to the Twitter thing I said at the start. I just wish it felt a bit more hefty in the cabin, had a bit more colour in it, and that the driving position was a bit better. Also, that the infotainment was more user-friendly. But I'm genuinely really glad that this car exists and that Citroen is doing what it's doing, that it's focusing on idiosyncratic and very, very comfortable cars. It's just so different from everything else. And I think most of what you can criticise if you're kind of being myopic about it can be easily overlooked. I like it you should try one. I will end it there. Thank you for watching. You've made it this far. Please have a look at our other stuff. It's really good. And if you haven't subscribed already, please reward us for having your attention for this long by hitting the subscribe button. Really appreciate your time. Cheers. See you next time. Bye. You're doing great.